Hey guys, welcome to my new series on plastic recycling. Why is plastic recycling so confusing? Obviously this is based in the UK, but if you're watching from other countries, stay with us. Plastic waste has obviously been a hot topic uh, during 2018, and that is unlikely to change into 2019. If anything, it's probably gonna become more talked about as we discover it's more of a problem. Most people are trying their best to recycle plastic, but there are many different ways in which recycling is collected by councils across the UK. This has obviously left us um, confused as to what can be recycled and what can't be recycled. I found this map which shows how many different plastics the councils of the UK collect for recycling, just as a starting point. As you can see, there is a huge amount of difference between the councils across the UK. It's a whole range of blue. Um, some of them are doing very well and they are collecting 13 to 15 types of plastic, while there are two which are very disappointing. Rotherham, Tunbridge and Morling, looking at you. Each council collects its plastic recycling differently. An analysis conducted by the BBC shows there are actually 39 different sets of rules for what can be put in plastic recycling collections. I think the best place to start is to have a look at the seven main types you will see on the labels for your plastic products. Type one, which is PET. P-E-T sometimes has an E on the end, depending on where you are from. This is the most commonly used type of plastic and PET stands for polyethylene terephthalate. Phthalate, terephthalate, terephthalate. Drinks bottles are made from it and other items. Things like the trays fruit comes in. I've noticed that some of mine are made from PET, um, whereas others are made from different stuff. Um, the main one that you will see is drinks bottles. Interestingly enough, things made from PET are actually designed for single use applications and repeated use increases the risk of the chemicals from the plastic leaching out and bacterial growth. According to experts, PET plastic is difficult to decontaminate and proper cleaning requires harmful chemicals. PETs may also leach carcinogens which are cancer causing chemicals. PET is easy to recycle and is often made into new products such as uh, stuffing for pillows and things like that. Um, as plastic bottles are the main single use item in this range, consider swapping those to the reusable bottles which are made of sturdier stuff which won't leach into your drinks. So that's probably why most, if you look at water bottles it doesn't actually specify do not reuse. Type 2, HDPE, which stands for high density polyethylene. Uh, this is commonly used in milk, cartons, cleaning agent bottles, so you bleach, shampoo bottles and things like that. Um, HDPE is one of the most commonly recycled plastics and is considered one of the safest forms of plastics. Um, it's relatively simple and cost effective to um, recycle so the process doesn't require much effort, uh, energy, that sort of thing. Um, however, the HDPE plastic is very hard wearing and doesn't break down under exposure to sunlight or extremes of heating or freezing. So for this reason it is important that they are put into the recycling where possible so that they don't uh, contaminate the environment. Products made of HDPE HDPE are reusable and recyclable. Type 3, PVC. Um, this stands for polyvinyl chloride and it's it comes in two types. You've got the soft flexible plastic which you can find on uh, sort of clear plastic food wrapping, cooking oil bottles, uh, teething rings, toys for children and animals and the blister packaging are for medication and things like that. You can also get the hard PVC, you know the stuff that's used for window frames, garden hoses, etc. And they use that because it's relatively impervious to sunlight and weather, so it's quite hardy. PVC is actually dubbed as poison plastic because it contains numerous toxins which it can leach throughout its entire life cycle. So the chemicals that it's made from will 
gradually come out of it. Almost all products made from PVC are created from virgin material. Less, less than 1% of PVC is actually recycled. Sometimes PVC can be repurposed, but it should not be used for um, applications with food or for children's toys and things like that because of these toxic chemicals that it does leach throughout its lifetime. Okay, type four is LDPE, which stands for low density polyethylene. Um, this is commonly used for shopping bags, bread bags, and most stretchy wrapping. So if your plastic stretches, chances are it's LDPE. Luckily, this is considered less toxic than other plastics and relatively safe to use. However, it's not commonly recycled, but there are changes being made for to allow this to be recycled more efficiently. You may have seen that you can recycle your shopping bags and things like that at supermarkets. That's one way of doing it. When it is recycled, this type of plastic is used for plastic lumber, uh, landscaping boards, bin liners, floor tiles, that sort of thing. And the products made using recycled LDPE are not as hard or rigid as those made from the HDPE. If you've got products that are made from LDPE, uh, they're reusable, but as I said, they're not always recyclable. You do need to check with your local collection service, your local council, that sort of thing, to see if they are taking LDPE for recycling curbside. Some will, most won't. If you've been to any of the big supermarkets, you'll sometimes you'll see they'll have uh, bag collection points where you can take your old carrier bags, you can take your bread bags, um, and things like that. Um, I'll, there is a website that I'll put in the link, which I will also talk about in a bit, which tells you what types of plastic LDPE they will take that you can put into these carrier bag recycling points. Um, I've got a massive stash currently in my living room of two carrier bags full of this LDPE plastic that I'm going to take to my local supermarket, which has a collection point for these. Type 5, PP, polypropylene. Um, it's tough, it's lightweight, and it has excellent heat resistant qualities, according to the internet. Um, it's used because it serves as a barrier against moisture, grease, and chemicals. So when you open your cereal packet, that plastic bag is made from polypropylene. It's also commonly used in disposable nappies, buckets, plastic bottle tops, margarine and yogurt containers, uh, crisp bags, among other things, uh, straws, packing tape and rope. Some councils will take polypropylene through their curbside recycling um, and if they do take it and it is recycled it's often used for landscape border stripping, battery cases, brooms, bins and trays so it can be recycled. Good news, polypropylene is considered safe for reuse. Um, often if you have the reusable water bottles, well, if you look on the bottom of them you'll see that there is actually a number five plastic that they've used. Mine are all fives. However if you still want to cut down on this because it still can be quite difficult to recycle you can go for the reusable straws so I have some nice metal straws um, that I got off Amazon. Reusable water bottles again they may still actually be a five but it's better than the one isn't it the option. Um, and if you've got babies, consider the cloth nappies, so you don't put these disposable nappies into the rubbish tips, which will not biodegrade, essentially. That is the grand message, is most of this plastic will not biodegrade when you tend to landfill. That's a whole new video. Type six, we're almost there. PS, polystyrene. Um, I'm sure we're all very familiar with polystyrene, it's lightweight, it's inexpensive um, and it's an easily formed plastic which has a wide variety of uses. Chances are you've probably got some sitting in your house somewhere. You would have commonly seen it as those disposable styrofoam coffee cups that you get from you know, the tea van or something. Um, take out food containers, some egg cartons, um, I presume they mean the hard ones, not the cardboard ones. Um, picnic cutlery, so the plastic disposable white things, chances are the polystyrene, um, foam packaging and those foam watt sits that you get in packaging, that's all polystyrene. It does also come in a hard form, so you've got the soft stuff, which is 
stuff you break and it ends up in about six million pieces and you find it forever more even though you've hoovered 600 times. Um, you have the hard polystyrene as well which is like your CD cases, um, the cutlery and things like that. So the white foam stuff is weak, um, it breaks up easily, it's dispersed through the natural environment, it ends up in the sea, things eat it, it get, breaks up into lots of little pieces and gets stuck to seaweed and things like that. Polystyrene may also leach styrene, the chemical, uh, which is considered a possible human cast castogen. It can leach it into food products if you microwave your polystyrene leftover kebab from Friday night. I don't recommend microwaving polystyrene, it does tend to melt. And the chemicals present in polystyrene have been linked to um, human health and reproductive system dysfunction. So if you've got a lot of polystyrene in your life, maybe cut that out. Recycling is not widely available for polystyrene. Most places will not recycle it. It is very difficult to recycle. So try, where possible, to eliminate it from your life. So get yourself a reusable coffee cup. Um, get yourself compostable or reusable picnic cutlery if you're one of these people that likes to eat al fresco a lot. Swap your Friday night kebab in a plastic pot for something maybe slightly healthier. Okay, final type, type seven, which is categorized as other. Um, this was designed to actually catch all the polycarbonate and other plastics. So there's typically no standardized recycling and reuse protocols for these things. Um, I haven't seen many sevens in my day-to-day -day life looking at plastic, recycling it, that sort of thing. Um, it tends to be items made from acrylic, nylon, fiberglass, obscure plastic. The primary concern with these number seven plastics is again the leaching. Uh, there is potential for the chemicals leaching into food or drinks if the products are packaged in um, polycarbonate containers made using BPA, which is bisphenol A. BPA is a xenoestrogen which is a known endocrine disruptor. So any plastics that are a number seven are not designed for reuse unless they come with the PLA compostable code. And it says PLA underneath it is actually compostable. So those ones should be thrown into the compost bin or your compost heap or whatever, um, rather than into your recycling because they cannot be recycled. The plastics which are a type 1, which is your PET, a type 2, which is your HDPE, or a type 4, which is your LDPE on the bottom, are safe choices, or safer choices, and they don't contain the BPA. So that's why predominantly you'll find the food, drinks, etc., are kept in those kind of plastic containers rather than anything with a label to 7. So yeah, you probably won't come across many 7s unless you're in the fiberglass industry. We have an odd one, Tetra Packs. How many of you have UHT milk or you take milk alternatives like soya, hazelnut, almond, rice milk, that sort of thing? They'll all come in Tetra Packs. Um, or if you're a fruit juice drinker, chances are most of those come in Tetra Packs. Um, and these are odd when it comes to recycling. Some councils cast them as plastics due to their inner lining, so they're kind of cardboard, shiny outer, but they're plastic on the inside to stop leaks. Um, so therefore they will either collect them or they won't. It, it completely depends on the council. Where I live at the minute, they, my council do not take them. However, where my parents live, the council do take them because they're cast as a plastic they can recycle. So I save all of mine up every few weeks, take them home, dump them in their recycling bin, so at least I know that they're going off to a better place. If you don't know whether your council will recycle the Tetra Packs, uh, get in touch with them, see what they say, or you can use the Tetra Pack website, which I'll put in the link, I'll put a link down the bottom, um, to see if there are any collection points in your area. My nearest one I have to drive to, and it's in the next, it's about half an hour drive away, I think, which is why I tend to just save mine up and take them home because I'm going that way anyway. Um, if you don't have anywhere any curbside collections, if you don't have any Tetra Pak collection points near you, 
but you do know of friends or family who are living in an, an area where they take them in their recycling bins, maybe you could just ask them nicely if you could uh, borrow their bin. Black plastics, I haven't actually covered these, even though they're made from plastics which are typically can be recycled, so they might be a one, a two, sometimes a five, um, they're actually much harder to recycle for the very reason that the machines can't see them. They use, in the recycling plants, the machines will use cameras and infrared, that sort of thing, to detect the different types of plastic and they'll take them out, uh, move them along, separate them, that sort of thing. But they can't see the black, they're essentially invisible to these cameras, which is why they're very difficult to actually recycle. Uh, plus there's no real demand for coloured plastics in recycling. Most of it is the clear types because they can obviously be reused made into something else, whereas if it's got a colour in it, it's more difficult. The other main point is to actually just check with your local council to see what they will take curbside. As I said, there are 39 different rules for recycling in this country at the minute. Um, hopefully that will change though, I think the government is aiming to create one rule that fits every council and everyone has to go with it. So that would be nice. Another website that I'll put in the link below is the Recycle Now website. So you can go to RecycleNow.com and it will tell you where you can recycle all sorts of things, not just plastic. So that's a very good website, RecycleNow.com. As I said earlier, check if your local supermarket has the recycling point for carrier bags and other type 4 plastics. Also check the packaging on their own brand products. I know one supermarket says on its cereal that the plastic bag inside is actually recyclable if you take it back to them. Ditch your drink bottles. Ditch the type 1 PET drink bottles and swap to a reusable one. If you are a big coffee or tea drinker from on the move, get yourself a reusable coffee cup that you can take to your local coffee shop because the disposable ones are not recyclable. However, if you get a takeaway coffee cup from Costa, you can take them back and they will recycle them. Um, but they will also take other coffee cups from different chains. So if you go to Starbucks, Cafe Nero, your local coffee shop down the high street and they give you a disposable cup, you can take them all into Costa and they will recycle them, no, no issues. So that's it for episode one. Hopefully you've picked up something useful from this video and you feel more more confident, more clued up, more knowledgeable about recycling in the UK. Um, as I said, some of these things will apply to all countries because we all use the same plastic. It's all the same stuff. It's all the same plastic codes. Um, so whether you're in the US or the Euro or Europe or things like that, then you can still check your codes. Uh, however, your recycling schemes are going to be slightly different. Possibly better, possibly worse. Let me know. Check the description box. I will put the links for Recycle Now, the Tetra Pack, and the BBC and the other website that I used for some of this information. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I upload new videos, which will happen. I'm, I'm hoping to make this more of a series, plus other things. This channel is a kind of a mishmash. Maybe you'll find something else interesting to watch. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Bye!